this is Michael Lindsay. I'm out here for my first ride on the 2020 Yamaha YZ450F. Now, admittedly, this experience is a little different than most bike launches I do because typically we're invited out to test them with the OEM. But in this case, the bike isn't available to media for a couple weeks, so I went out to Shop Around Motorsports and bought this YZ450F. So we just came out to try it out. We don't have all the exact technical info from Yamaha. I got to talk to one of the reps here today just briefly about the bike. Here's what we do know about the changes. It does have a new frame. This is a mid-generation bike for Yamaha. It doesn't dimensionally look any different or really feel different to grip it or anything like that, but it's all the wall thicknesses and the way they've tried to make it flex that has changed. Yamaha has also done a big engine update. The entire cylinder head casting and design is new. It still uses a cam over bucket system, unlike a lot of the OEMs that are moving to a finger follower system. But what they've done with this head is really tried to decrease the intake and exhaust angle. So they brought that head in a lot tighter. They've been able to bring the mass of it down and centralize it more. The fuel and air are getting into the motor and back out of it even quicker and more efficiently. Now, in hearing this, I would have thought most of these power gains would have been maybe more towards the mid to top end of the scale, but after riding it, it's really just increasing the low to mid performance they already had. The bike is very well spread, maybe not as top end heavy as say the KTM or the Husqvarna, but they've done an amazing job of taking what already feels like the torquiest 450 in the class and making that roll on power experience even better. They've been able to give it a little bit more of a connected feel. They've been working on taking that massive amount of initial hit they have and making it more usable. And that's really what they've done this year. It's a little bit more connected. It's a little bit more pliable. And honestly, the bike's physical weight is down one pound. But when you make the power more pliable like this, there's certain situations where the engine can help you manipulate the bike easier and it makes the Yamaha feel even a little bit lighter than it actually is. So overall, it just pulls a little bit more seamlessly. Honestly, this bike is ridiculously fast. I didn't want to rev this 450 that much, so I kept short shifting it, and I was really impressed by the amount of power it would put down. And it makes it really easy to ride because the Yamaha works well, kind of in any gear position at about any RPM, it makes very usable power. So you can spend less time worrying about your shift points and more time worried about your corner entries, how you're rolling through the corner, how you're actuating the brakes and all that. And just not worried about that you're gonna have the right amount of juice when you actually come to get out of that section or hit that obstacle. The chassis change is interesting because like I said, it's not a big geometry change or a thickness change in between your legs or anything, but it is a feel change. And the first thing I noticed was corner roll feel through the middle of the corner to the exit and some added comfort. I feel like the Yamaha, they've just of course been working on more and more about their actuation in their corner, how the bike rolls in, how the power is used coming out. And the chassis change they made for me really made a difference right as I would enter the corner, as I would get that roll feel, the bike would drop in a little bit easier it would roll through the middle of the corner on power better and then hold through the exit a little bit clearer. With adding comfort to the frame, they've also tried to stiffen up the suspension settings. It's been a very easy bike to ride at 85, 90% of your capabilities, but it was also a little bit hard to push to that edge of your experience level because it felt like you're pushing maybe the suspension beyond what it was set up for. In this, they've been able to bring the ride height of the bike up quite a bit by stiffening the settings. Uh, the only real changes I made to this were kind of negate that. Because of my weight, I did need to settle a little more on corner entry. So I'm a little bit softer on compression and a tad bit slower on the rebound. Uh, something I wasn't a really big fan of is the bar mount positions issue. They have the two holes and they've always had the bar mounts in the back position. They're trying to convince you to put more weight on the front end to make a handlebar. So they've put the bar mounts in a off the showroom floor in the front position, which for me with short arms and just a smaller build, I just felt like I was trapped on the front of the bike the entire time and couldn't move around. So I reversed that, I went back to the back bar mounts, and I even turned around the bar mounts and went to the furthest back position to open up my ability to move around the bike. I feel like a lot of the changes they've made to the suspension, the front axle, the wheel spacers last year, they've got really good front end corner grip, and I felt like the bar position was just a bit overkill. Where the Yamaha really shines is in the rough. The symmetry between the suspension and the chassis on this bike to me is at an all time high. The way it reacts when you push it into those rough sections is phenomenal, that's where it really shines. I feel like it's such an amazing bike to ride at 90 to 95% of my capabilities. Uh, there still is something about the Yamaha layout when I try to go to the edge of what I consider my ability that it could be a little bit unruly. It is set up as a more comfortable, easier to ride bike, albeit that the ride height is better on the bike this year. I still feel like I could work on the suspension a little bit more if I was to try to ride this bike in a little bit more of aggressive state. And I also feel like with engine, I'd want to do a few things with their map tuning on their app. 
Uh, try to either free up the motor, because a little bit right now when you downshift early, it's a little bit more engine braking than I would like. And that's stuff that we're going to revisit with the Yamaha crew when their media bikes become public and when they start doing their intros, because I think there's some few things that could help there. Uh, SAG was initially set at 100, which was the recommendation. I ended up at 102 just to level it out a little bit more during braking. And at that point, I was pretty happy with the chassis balance overall. We're starting on shootouts next week, so make sure you stay tuned to see how the Yamaha finishes out.